Hello and welcome to this Mind Fusion video tutorial where we will build an org chart with the Diagramming for JavaScript library. Our org chart will allow the user to edit certain fields for each employee to create new employees and to rearrange the org hierarchy. We start with an empty org chart folder. There, we create a new subfolder called common and copy the jQuery scripts that are by our sample. In the main folder of the project, we copy the image files that will be rendered initially by the org chart and the scripts for the diagramming library, mindfusion.common and mindfusion.diagramming. In a new file, we start writing the HTML for our sample. First, we reference the jQuery files that we have copied to the common folder. Then, in the body of the web page, we add references to the diagramming scripts and to a new script file, orgchareditor.js, which will be used by the web page. It is important to reference those files in the body, right before the closing body tag, because some browsers might not load the diagramming scripts correctly if referenced in the head section. Now let's create a div with an HTML canvas element in it. The canvas has an ID because we will need to access it in the JavaScript code behind file. Let's create the JS file. There, we first do some mapping for the JS classes and enums that we want to use. Let's initialize the org chart node object. First, we call the abstraction layer .initialize base method, and then we set some default properties for this new type of node, which inherits from table node. Our new org chart node is a table with three rows and four columns. The first cell spans four rows, and that's the image. The cells in the second column have special fonts because they contain the data labels. We also apply some styling to the table adjust the style of the handles, assign a new brush, and set the shape to a rounded rectangle. We also assign some default values to the data fields. Time to create the prototype of the org chart node. We call abstractionlayer.callBase method to update the canvas elements with the new node. We add some getters and setters for the title of the employee, for the full name, and now for the image. We assign the image to the first cell and set its alignment to stretch. We need two more getters and setters, for the comments and for the ID. The ID cannot be set by the user, it is assigned automatically. We have a global variable that keeps track of the IDs and it gets incremented with each new org chart node. The setFields function is where the new data gets assigned. Here we look for the boss of the employee and set it. There are also two important methods, one that rearranges the hierarchy with the new node and the other that assigns the right color for the background. The setHierarchy method assigns level zero to the boss and then looks at which level of the hierarchy the node stands. Each level adds one to the hierarchy. The new node is added to the subordinates of the boss and the hierarchy is rearranged by recursively calling the method until all nodes on all levels are arranged. The setColor method is a simple one. It assigns the node the right background color according to its level in the hierarchy. The resize method guarantees that all data has been added to the cell fits. First, we call the resize to fit text method of the diagram to fit all text. Then we add the size of the image. Now let's configure the table cells. By default, we forbid editing on the table cells. Then we adjust the padding of the text labels and then allow edit only on the cells that contain employee data and not labels. The setBoss method is called assign the provided boss to the employee. The hierarchy must be rearranged and the diagram redrawn. The addChild method adds a new node to the hierarchy. 
That could be an existing node or a brand new node. We check to see which is the case. When a child node is removed, we check its index and remove it from the child nodes array. We have two more methods to add to the org child node prototype. The first resets the hierarchy. It resets the bosses of the nodes when necessary in recursion. The second method checks if a given node is a child node to some other node. Now let's use the document.ready function to create the diagram. We call abstractionLayer.register class to register the new org child node class as a node class that inherits from table node. Then we create an instance of the tree layout and set its direction and link type to cascading. Then we create the diagram. We use the ID of the canvas from the HTML page and create a diagram object. We set its behavior to custom, the scroll to auto, customize the back brush, and the shape of the links. Time to handle some events. The first event is clicked. We get the mouse position and check if the right mouse button was clicked. If yes, we create a new org chart node, which we add to the items of the diagram and rearrange the diagram using animations and the tree layout which we initialized above. When the animated layout has completed, we resize the diagram to fit all items that were arranged. When a node is clicked, we call the onNodeClicked method, which we will examine in a few seconds. When a node is selected, we increase its Z index to make it stand out of all other nodes. When the node is deselected, we set its Z index back to zero. When the user clicks on a node, we look at the mouse button. With a left click, we know that she wants to edit the node. With a right click, we know that we must create a new node. The EditNode method first gets the cell editor. This is an object that contains information about the cell that is edited. We also check if the user is allowed to edit the cell. If the cell contains an image, we check the new URL and then perform the necessary size adjustments to fit the new image. We pay attention to the cell at the fourth row, which is next to the cell with the comments. Since the comments cell can get rather length, in those cases, we add the extra length as image padding to avoid the image being disproportionately resized. If text on any of the other cells is edited, we just assign it and finally rearrange the diagram with an animated layout. The link created event is handled by the on link created method. In it, we check if the link can be edited and then we style it. The cell text edited event calls the on edited method of the cell. We already looked at the on edited method when we examined the on node clicked event. When a node is deleted or a link is created, we just rearrange the diagram. When a link is deleted, we have to remove its destination node from the children of its boss and reset the boss text to an empty string to illustrate that currently this employee has no boss. The node modified event handles the case when an unconnected node has been dragged and dropped over an existing node, which would have become its boss. We find the nodes that are placed at this mouse position and identify the one on which the node was placed. Then we set it as the boss for the modified node, create and style a link between them. The last event is the enter in place edit mode event. There we find the cell that is edited and set the right attribute for it. Now let's create some sample org chart nodes using the images in the application folder. First, we create a node for the CEO. We set the bounds of the node, the title, and the full name of the employee. Next, we set image, add a comment, and resize the node to fit the image and the text. At last, we add the new node to the items of the diagram. We create the other nodes the same way. They have one more setting though, a boss. 
We also need to create some links between the nodes to build the org hierarchy. First, we connect the CEO with its direct subordinates, the CTO, the PR manager, and the HR manager. Then we connect the media specialist to its boss, the PR manager. The last thing to do is to arrange the diagram. We use the animated version of the layout. We also disable in place edit for items and set the diagram behavior to modify. That was all about the code. Now let's run the application. The org chart looks fine. The animated layout lets you observe how the nodes get arranged. Let's try to right click on a node and create a new employee as its subordinate. We paste the URL of the image and edit the data. This employee is not a subordinate to the media specialist. It is on the same hierarchy level. We delete the arrow and drop the node onto the PR manager, which is its boss. The hierarchy gets rearranged and the new org chart node changes its color to match its new position. Let's try to create some more new nodes. You see how the layout rearranges the diagram each time. The color of the node depends on the hierarchy level. Let's go deeper into the organization. As you see, the node changes color at each level. And that was all for this time. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.